Hi everyone and welcome to Kigu Art. This is where I tell you more about art history while I paint inspired by the artist, the movement or the style that I'm telling you more about. If this sounds like an interesting idea, please leave a thumbs up so that more people can find me. If you have a question or maybe a suggestion of what part of art history I can explore in the future, please leave a comment below. Alright then, that was it. Let's get started. So, welcome everyone to my channel that I call Kigu Art and my very first video. I am so excited to finally complete this video and have so many ideas for coming ones. I will be the first one to point out that my English isn't perfect. It sounds good, but grammar and sometimes pronunciation sucks. I am from Sweden and I've been living with a Canadian half of my life and no, my English didn't improve that much. But this is the charm of my videos. You just have to live with it. Anyway, back to what I'm doing on the screen right now. The idea with my videos is that I will paint something inspired of the art history I'm talking about. And for today's video I chose Impressionism. That means that I will um, try to paint in the style of Impressionism. Um, as you soon will learn, I'm doing mistakes already. First of all, I sketched my motif on the canvas. Impressionists probably did do that. I'm also painting inside and I'm using a photo as a reference. Pretty sure the Impressionists didn't do that either. I found this scene by the lake in the town where I work and I thought it would be perfect for this video. So before I start telling you more about Impressionism and their development, I would like to make a quick look back at the art popular in the beginning and the middle part of 1800 in France, because that's where the Impressionism developed. The schools at the time were teaching classical art with emphasis on depicting historical or mythical subject matter with literary or anecdotal overtones. The accepted way of painting was with fine finish and details with realistic figurative and moral motifs. The ruling styles were neoclassicism, romanticism and realism. Kind of like this one, Liberty Leading the People by Delacroix. It's from 1830. Or this one, Napoleon Crossing the Alps by David. That one is from 1801. Or or this one, The Gleaners by Millet, that one is from 1857. The Impressionism developed in Paris around 1860s to the 70s by a group of artists that rebelled against the traditional way of painting. And among those artists were Claude Monet, Edouard Manet, Auguste Renoir, Edgar Degas, Camille Pissarro, just to mention a few. They were inspired by the many changes and developments around them, where the whole society were getting modernized. The Impressionists wanted to create art reflecting the modern world they lived in. They looked for a deeper meaning in reality, beyond the photographic reality that had been the norm so far. And worth to mention here is that the camera developed in the 1850s, and it had a huge impact on the Impressionists' artistic development. The Impressionists wanted to make something new, and inspired of the photograph, they tried to catch the moment, the atmosphere, and the mood in the scene they had in front of them. The light in the paintings became important. The light, the color, and the feeling of movement. A snapshot of reality. Light changes over day, and so does the impression. Some artists kept on painting the same motif over and over again at different times of the day, or the year, or in different weathers, just to illustrate this. And one of these series are made of Claude Monet during the 1890s to 91. The series contains 25 canvases of haystacks. Monet also made another series of the Rowan Cathedral, and that series contained about 30 canvases. Before the artists had been working inside of their studios, where the paintings could take weeks, months, yeah, sometimes even years to complete, the Impressionists moved outside instead to experience the moment, in the moment, and to be able to study the light and its effect on color. They developed a new way to paint, where the colors provided definitions instead of black lines. Instead of black and grays in shadows and snow, they used complementary colors. 
This gets very clear in one of Monet's haystack paintings, where blue replaces black in the shadow. Now, let's see how my painting is going. It looks like the sky, trees, grass and a path is coming up. Uh, still missing the trunks though. And I'm still hesitating on starting the water. i never been good at painting water, as you will see later on here. And I have to keep reminding myself to paint as an impressionist. Because they had to be fast if they wanted to catch a specific time of the day, because the light was constantly changing. Their way of painting were defined of thick, rough and painterly brush strokes. They didn't mix colors, which were pure, light and intensive. Instead, they placed individual colors side by side. Yeah, right. Painterly and rough brush strokes. My own style is very smooth, even if it's very colorful. And I can't see any roughness here. There, more trunks are up. My struggle is to paint with short brush strokes, not mixing the colors and not overthink my painting. The composition of Impressionists' paintings was inspired of the photograph and was arranged, cropped and asymmetrical to reinforce the feeling of a snapshot of reality at a specific time, showing the world as they saw it, the impression. This is very clear in Monet's painting A Bar at the Folies Berger, where a tired-looking bar girl is helping a man, which is also seen in the mirror behind her, and one could say that the man is us, the viewers. Some kind of show is going on behind us, and we can see a pair of legs in the top left corner with an audience watching. Now, I painted the rocks at the shoreline, and soon I just can't avoid to start painting that water. But back to the Impressionists. As I've been telling you, they wanted to start something totally new. They turned away from traditional subject matter and started to paint what they saw in their everyday life. The attention was turned to the artist's way of manipulate color, tone and texture. The painted landscapes, city motifs, like this one, the Guerre Saint Lazare of Monet from 1877. They went to cabarets, cafes, and bars and painted what they saw there. Degas, he painted this one, the dance class between 1873 and 76. Public leisure was also a popular motif to paint, and Renoir painted his Moulin de Galais, 1876. Other details that the Impressionists differed from traditional painting was that they abandoned traditional linear perspective as clarity of form. They concentrated on the more important elements of the picture from the lesser ones. Here is Bertie Morisot's reading from 1873. She is one of the female Impressionists. And this is Mary Cassatt's The Boating Party from 1893-94. And she's one of the most known female Impressionists. All of the artists within the movement approached the idea of Impressionism in different ways. But what united them was a focus on how light could define movement in time. So, how am I doing? Working on the house and the tree line behind the trees in the front? Still avoiding the water. Anyway. Every year in Paris there was an exhibition held, showcasing a selection of hand-picked art favoring conventional subject matter as historical, mythical and allegorial scenes in a realistic style. Impressionism did not fit that description and was, among other styles, rejected. And tired of rejection and old approach to the art, the artists decided to skip the exhibition and host their own 1874. And among the artists were Monet, Renoir, Pissarro and Degas, among others. The exhibition got lots of critiques. People thought the paintings looked unfinished and amateurish and the composition felt unfamiliar for the visitors. The Impressionists' theory of light's impact on the landscape wasn't accepted at all and the choice of everyday life of motif uh, was considered as vulgar. Most notable artwork was Monet's Impression Sunrise, painted in 1872. One journalist, Louis Leroy, made an article in the satiric magazine Le Charivari. 
He made fun of the movement, and based on Monet's painting, he called them Impressionists. However, the group soon adopted the name as a description of their intention with their art. That was to capture a split second of life and put it on a canvas as they saw it, the impression. But now, let's talk about the water and it's getting worse by every brushstroke. As I said earlier, I never been good at painting water, but I like to challenge myself now and then. But this is painful to watch. After the sitting of painting and struggling to get reflections, waves and movements of the water right, I was so unhappy I just stopped. I wiped all wet paint off the canvas and I didn't come back for several days. And then I started all over again. And this time I was more satisfied. It's not perfect, but it works. By the 1880s, the group of artists started to dissolve. Each artist developed their own individual style, interests and principles. But they never let go of freedom of technique or personal approach to subject matter. The Impressionistic movement is seen as the starting point of modernism and have influenced many coming movements. And even though the movement's existence was short, it had accomplished a revolution in the history of art. It had freed Western painting from traditional techniques and approaches to subject matter. And that also brings my painting to an end. And this is the final result. Does it look like an impressionistic painting with their typical rough painterly brush strokes where light is in focus? Mm, no, but I tried. Was it fun to paint it? Oh yes, it was interesting to try to paint in another style and to paint city landscape motifs, which isn't what I normally paint. And what do I think about it? I really like it. Uh, it works and I'm probably going to hang it on the wall. Alright everyone, that was it. This is the finished creation and if you want to see more by me in the future, consider to subscribe to my channel. I hope you learned some more art history on the way. That was it. Thank you and goodbye.